Hello and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. You know, I get a lot of these podcast ideas from the astronomyforum.net website. Let me say that again, astronomyforum.net.net, where Telescope Man does a little moderation there from time to time and I get some of these ideas from some of the questions there that beginners pose. And lately, we've been getting a lot of questions from beginners who just bought their first telescope. And basically, the question goes something like this. I took my brand new telescope outside tonight. I pointed it at the moon. I saw the moon in my finder scope, but it is not in the telescope. What is the matter? Do I have a broken telescope? No, you don't have a broken telescope. What you've got is a finder scope, probably smaller than this one, but since this is a 50 millimeter, see if I can give you a good look at that. Yep, take this cap off. Give you a good look at that. Yeah, 50 millimeter. All right which is what I would recommend that you put on your scope if it's large enough to handle it, is a 50 millimeter finder. But what you haven't done yet, and the reason why you can't see anything in the telescope is, you must align this finder with the tube of that telescope by adjusting these little screws that you see on here. Okay, these little screws. Now notice this one has six. It has six different ones on there. You see that? Six different uh, screws. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, here's the front. And here's the rear, of course. And what I usually do is pick one of the three. So, and I usually pick the ones nearest the eyepiece of the finder scope. And I turn these three screws, I tighten some, loosen some, depending on which way the crosshairs are going. And that's how you align this tube to your main tube. And here's how you do it. It's really a two-step process. During the daytime, you set up outside, Point the scope at some object on the ground that's far away. A telephone pole, the very top of a telephone pole would be good. The top of a church steeple might be good. The edge of a building, the exact edge in the center of the eyepiece, you know, the edge of the building off in the distance might be good. And you get that right in the eyepiece of the main tube, you get it in there, and you lock everything down so the scope cannot move. Then, you start adjusting these little screws here so that the crosshairs inside of this scope, inside this finder scope, are lined up on the same object that is in the main tube. What you've been doing is doing it backwards, okay? You got to think of it like a gun sight. If we're going to do, if we're going to line up a gun, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the range. We're going to lay that gun down on some sandbags. There's going to be a target out there. All right. We're going to sight it in. We're going to look through our scope, you know, where however it's adjusted, which is usually not right. And we're going to fire at the center of that target. Okay. And that bullet's going to land somewhere on that target, not on the center, I guarantee you, the first time. Then we're going to adjust the crosshairs to match where the bullet landed to bring it back into the center of the target. So that's basically the same principle you're doing here. You're lining up the tube, the main tube, on an object in the distance, locking it down, and then adjusting this so that it points to the same object. 
So once you've done that during the daytime, you've got it roughly aligned. Believe me, it's not perfect, okay, yet. It's close, but not perfect. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take it out at night. You're going to find a semi-bright star up there that you can find in the scope, in the main scope. Sorry, you got to point it to that star, all right? Point it to this bright star that you see up there. You can try it on the moon. That, that'll work too, but nah, it's kind of a big target. All right? You really need a point light source, like a star or a planet would work. Okay. Point it at that star or planet and center it in the eyepiece. Lock it down and then readjust this again your finder scope you're going to find that the crosshairs aren't quite exactly on that object they would be a little bit off because the one you did during the daytime is not perfectly accurate okay because it's not a point light source so then you readjust it and you're ready to go basically you're going to have to do some little adjustments Every time you set up, because you're going to jostle the scope, you're going to knock the crosshairs off, you know, you're going to move this around, you're going to hit it with your hand or something, and knock it out of alignment, and you're going to have to realign it. So the first thing I usually do when I set up is make sure my finder scope is pointed at the same spot as my main tube. And that's why I usually set up in the daytime so that I can pick a distant object and do that and get it roughly aligned. That way at night, more than likely, that star is going to be somewhere in this wider field little telescope. It might not be in your big telescope, but it might show up here because this scope, has a wider field of view than those two scopes behind me, okay? A wider field of view. So probably you're going to see it in here. And you'll line it up right on the crosshairs, you know, because you think that's right. And you go look in your telescope and it's not there. Hey, move it a little bit one way and look. Move it a little bit the other way. Move it up just a teeny bit. And that star will come in because you've roughly aligned it already during the daytime. Now, <clears throat> let's just touch on a minute some different finder scopes. What you're looking at here is a straight through 50 millimeter finder scope. Okay, straight through. And it's straight through because it's straight through. You look in here and look out the front straight through. Okay, they do make a right angle finder, and the only difference is the eyepiece is up here so that you can look, if the scope is pointed straight up, you can look straight down into the eyepiece, okay? You don't have to crane your neck, you know, and get on the ground or anything to see through it. Some people prefer the right angle uh, type eyepieces, uh, or excuse me, finder scopes, they prefer those right angles over the straight through because it's more comfortable to use. It just takes a little more practice to be able to point the scope properly when you're not looking down the tube while you're pointing it. The other kind of finder scope are like what you see on the scopes behind me, which are tell rads, and they're a red dot with a circle of a known size. So a tell rad has a four degree circle, big circle inside of it, and you can use that circle to star hop. So what you do is you look at your star chart, and you go, hey, that object is eight degrees about away from this particular star and you get that star in the tail rad and you move it two circles over in the proper direction and there you should be pointed in the proper direction for that eye for that uh, object 
that's why they're so good. And there's two versions of that type of uh, finder scope. One is the big tail rad, like you see behind me. Um, got one mounted there that you can see on this little uh, ETX back over here, the one back over this shoulder. You can see it on the top of that ETX. That's a tail rad. There's another one called a Rigel Quick Finder. It's a little smaller. So if you have a smaller scope, you might want to look at the Rigel Quick Finder. Okay, it has a two degree circle in it. All right, can be used the same way. Rigel Quick Finder or a tail rad. The other kind of red dot finder is simply a red dot that's projected up into the sky. All right, a red dot. Doesn't have any circles. It's just an aiming device. <clears throat> I really don't like these types of red dot finders, personally, because they're okay. I've got go-to scopes, and they're great for if I want to... Um, you know, align these two scopes you see behind me on two stars, which I have to do when I first set them up, is line them up on two stars, two different stars. That red dot works just fine, okay? And if you have a really good go-to scope, that's probably all you need because once you do your alignment, you're really just doing go-tos and you're not really looking through a finder, okay? Because you're probably not operating the scope manually, all right? You're doing go-tos. So for a go-to scope, a red dot will work okay, all right? Be sure that, uh, that you buy one in the $30 to $50 range. There's some real cheap ones out there. Okay, you're going to get frustrated with those, adjusting them. They don't quite adjust right. The light, the red light, may not be dimmable. Okay, you want to be able to dim the red light so it doesn't block out what you're looking at. All right, when you look up. All right, so you're not going to be too happy with those real cheap ones that are out there for like 15 bucks. All right, not going to be real happy. You can get them to work, but you need to spend thirty to fifty dollars on one, and you can get a much better quality one with adjustable uh, red light on it, or maybe with different types of red lights. You know, a crosshair or a little circle or a hatchwork on it or something. And there's a little switch you can turn on some of them, and it changes the design of the red light. So, but you got to pay a little more for that. I encourage you to, if you're going to upgrade to a red dot, that you upgrade to one that has some of these features, because it'll be more useful to you out in the field at night. So with that said, remember, you've got to line this thing up first with the main tube or it's going to be pointed where you don't want to be okay that's the first thing you got to do anyway like we always say i wish you clear skies and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every night <laughs>